is Pastor Dan Whitener. We welcome you here to this worship experience online this morning. Uh, we extend a welcome to those who may be uh, visiting with us for the first time here today. I'd also uh, like to say that we have in-person indoor services at 845 and 11 this morning. There are still about 10 ornaments left on the tree in the lobby for our Christmas in July celebration in support of Global Mission. So you can check out and pick up an ornament in the lobby. There's more information in the newsletter about that. The focus of our worship this morning is this is the uh, miracle account, our Lord's miracle, which is found in all four Gospels, the feeding of the 5,000. So we will focus today on how our Lord feeds us in so many different ways, and we'll be focusing on that over the next several weeks. Let us take a moment to prepare ourselves for worship this morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread from, of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. A student of literature once said that next to Homer's Odyssey, the Bible is the eatingest book in the world. One of the central eating stories in the Bible is the feeding of the 5,000. All four Gospels. 
Gospels agree on the basic details. Six months wages of bread needed to feed the multitude. 5,000 people waiting to be fed. Five barley loaves and two scrawny fish offered to help with this hospitality crisis. Try not to get caught up in how the miracle happened. Rather, take note of who makes things happen here. Focus on Jesus, the revealer of God's manna and mercy. Now, the super reasonable and empirical folks among us have suggested that this story is really about the miraculous domino effect of human sharing and generosity. An innocent Palestinian Cub Scout gives up his happy meal for the cause. And soon everyone begins to unpack the contents of their lunch sacks, and before you know it, everyone has a bit to eat. This take on the story reminds me of a Lutheran youth conference I attended in Salisbury, North Carolina in the 1970s. During the Bible study, one of the leaders stood before the audience with a single Krispy Kreme donut. She asked the person sitting in the crowd to pass that single donut throughout the auditorium. And if the crowd were careful and calculating, all 500 people there could eat. Well, the donut found its way up and down the rows, one sweaty, palmed adolescent to another. Warning, this was well before the days of COVID and 70% ethanol hand sanitizer. I don't advise anyone doing this experiment today. But yes, every youth in that place got a nibble, a microscopic crumb of the donut. Because no one was selfish and all were curious enough to make the experiment successful. But let's set the record straight. This is not a moral tale about the innate goodness of human hearts. This is not a story about the positive fruits of careful calculation. Look at the disciple Philip, the supreme calculator in the story. What does he say? Lord, we can't pull this off. We need the equivalent of one person's wages for six months to feed this crowd. We can't do it. At least Andrew chooses not to ignore the little boy over in the corner and his gifts on the hillside. But Andrew too wonders how to pull off a big meal with five barley loaves and a few stale fish fillets. The disciples truly don't get it. They see through the theological lens of limit, littleness, and scarcity. They sound like us, the scarcity-driven, spoiled, 21st century folks complaining about never having enough time, money, or energy. The lens of limit makes us driven, competitive, crabby, anxious, and acquisitive creatures. Christ, however, creates for us a lens implant of God's abundance. Make the people sit down. This, dear friends, is a story of God's fullness, God's overflowing provision. Jesus receives the offering from the little boy. What does that say about incorporating our youth into the ministry of the congregation? Take the offerings and leadership of the youth seriously.
Jesus embraces that boy in that small lunch. A small limited amount becomes an absolute supersized abundance. No trickle down mentality here. Not even a budget. Jesus simply takes the loaves, gives thanks, and distributes to those who are seated in the grass. All you can eat. He does the same with the fish. No need to squirrel. There are leftovers. Jesus embraces the small offering of a joyful little boy and creates abundant hospitality on the hillside. And we stand in wonder before the bread of life, rich in mercy, mysterious in power, and ever flowing with sympathy and inclusion. As we live into this same abundant mindset in Christ Jesus, we can also begin to live with the lens of abundant stewardship and shared trust. We can join Pastor Barbara Lundblad who once said, God embraces the small lunch, the stammering attempts to speak truth, the awkward witness we bear that sounds sometimes so inadequate, so silly. We can join Bruce Barton who says, Sometimes when I consider what tremendous consequences come from little things, a chance word, a tap on the shoulder, or a penny dropped on a newsstand, I am tempted to think there are no little things. In all of this, it is not the adequacy of our supplies or skills that finally makes the difference. It is the power of Jesus working in the littlest and least to transform the world into a world God desires, a world where all the hungry are satisfied and all the lonely find community. Sisters and brothers, God embraces and creates abundance out of our small offerings. Just as Christ embraced the young boy and his stale lunch by the Galilean lake. By God's limitless grace, all our offerings grow into the blessed banquet spirit. Now to God who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen.
Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the church, bless the ministries of our neighboring Lutheran congregations in the Lower Bucks Conference. Kindle in us a spirit of collaboration that all people may know your loving works. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for creation, send rains to lands experiencing drought and fires, send moderate weather to areas experiencing floods. Nurture wheat and barley crops grown for the nourishment of your people. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for those who govern, cast out arrogance, selfishness, and corruption, and instruct those who lead to practice compassion and the promotion of the common good. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for those bowed down by heavy burdens, those seeking adequate and meaningful employment, those unable to find affordable housing, and those without health insurance. Console those who grieve and hear the cries of those who call on you for healing and strength today, especially Colby, Phil, Ted, Warren, Geraldine, Gigi, Robin, Stacy, and those we name aloud or silently at this time. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for this congregation, deepen our resolve to use what we have to serve those in need. When we worry with that we do not have enough resources, assure us of your abundance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for those who have died, especially Bill Speck and Robert Lundquist. Sustain us with the memory and example of all the saints and the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray together boldly. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. At this time, let us take a special uh, time to, to think about a person that we would like to share the peace of our Lord with, either near us or maybe even far beyond us, that we can still send that message in a creative way. At this time, we also offer uh, give thanks to God for all the offerings that flow through the church in many and various ways uh, each and every day. Uh, we also give thanks to God for the in-kind offerings that flow through our lobby, and we are grateful for all of the abundance that God provides. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.